Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another one of Akem's live pharma trainings. Our presenter today is Winston Scott, he's our Export Business Development Coordinator. And the topic for today is how to, the correct way to mix and apply agricultural chemicals or pesticides. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask Winston to go ahead. Thank you very much, Georgia. Good afternoon to our farmers from the length and breadth of Jamaica and across the Caribbean. Welcome again to another live stream from um, Alkin Plant Limited. As Georgia mentioned, we're going to look at um, the correct way to mix and apply uh, pesticides. And uh, with no delay, let me get straight into it. Now, agricultural pesticides basically come in different formulations. And we tend to tank mix because we want to minimize the labor cost of application. We also want to minimize the use. Hold a second. Um, One sec, the page is not loading on this slide. All right, Winston, do you want me to share my screen? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, you may go ahead. Come up in some technical difficulties here. Okay. All Hold right. on, we seem to be having some technical difficulties. My screen is not moving either. Just give me a few, please. This is an app here. I'm doing an app in access to the PowerPoint has detected the graphics. It may not be configured for Mom. Mommy.
All right, I think we got it now. Jaja? Thank you very much. Go ahead, Winston. Okay, thanks again. And my apologies, um, farmers, for that delay, delay broadcast. Okay, happy Farmers Month again for all the farmers on the platform. All right, pesticide formulation will be the focus because one of the reasons why, one of the reasons um, tank mix is such a technical thing is because all pesticides are not, or were not created for us. Um, I get in a feedback. It's a Benjamin fire. Benjamin's fire, could you please mute your mic? Yes, all pesticides are not created equal. We have pesticides in different formulation, both liquid, and also um, dry states. So we're going to look at the different formulation so we can get a better understanding and appreciation of um, why a procedure is important when conducting a tank mix. So what is a formulation? Formulation is basically how the pesticide is packaged to contain its active ingredients. Its ingredients, they have two major ingredients in the, in the pesticides, which is one is the active ingredient and the other is the inert ingredient. Some pesticides may have more than one active ingredient. However, the active ingredient is responsible for killing the pest, while the inert ingredient makes the formulation safer, more effective and easier to handle and store. Some pesticides already contain uh, an adjuvant, while others you may have to add an adjuvant, an adjuvant when mixing for application. Types of formulation. You have wet formulations and dry formulation. First, we're going to look at the wet or otherwise called liquid formulation. These are your ECs or your E, which means emulsifiable concentrate. One example of that would be your Caratrax. You have your S, your SL, <coughs> or your SC, which would be soluble or soluble liquid or soluble concentrate. And the or example of that would be like your Capri. You have your aqueous solutions. You also have your flowable liquids, which is a flowable or flowable liquid or just liquid. You have a WDL, which is a water dispersible granules. For example, Bellis is one such water dispersible granule and also Carzone. In, in the image on the screen, you see we have a, a picture of an emulsifiable concentrate. It's basically an oil dispersed water, oil dispersing water with an emulsifier, which allows them to mix with water easily for application. Now on the left, you will see the product before it is mixed. And when it is mixed, it turns into a milky looking solution. And these are your emulsifiable concentrates. <clears throat> you have your soluble liquids, or your water soluble liquids once mixed with water there are no settling out example example like your glyphosate or glyphos max or glyphos ag41 you have a flowable or dispersible liquid which comes as a thick white um, milky substance and when it's mixed or diluted, it remains as a milky substance. It's just that the viscosity decreases. All right. So we're going to look at the dry formulations now. You have D for dust, B for baits, and these letters are you'd find them on the label, which we'll look at in 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 one of the successive slides. You have three G for granules. WP or W for wettable powder, SP or 
WSP, which represents soluble powder, DF for dry flowable, and WDG for wettable dispersible granules. Wettable powder needs constant agitation, like example, Acrobat. You have to constantly agitate it for it to stay in solution. If you mix and leave it standing for too long, some of the particles will settle out at the bottom. Before you apply, you'll have to re-agitate to get it into solution again. Dry flowable, you have your water dispersible granules again. These are an uh, example of dry flow flowable formulation. Also need constant agitation. Okay, so the effects of different formulation. You can look across the screen and you realize that our WP, wettable powder, for example, is Solcox in terms of its hazardous um, properties. You are at risk from inhalation. Phytotoxicity, relatively safe if applied according to the um, label specification. Effects on the equipment may be abrasive. Agitation is required, yes, and compatibility is very compatible com depending on the active ingredient of other products. But as a formulation, it is compatible. But let me not bore you and go through this entire table, but let me just look at the compatibility of each formulation. The dry flowable and the WDG, very good, are good compatibility. For the soluble powders, the emulsifiable concentrate, and the flowable liquids they are fair, fairly um, good in terms of compatibility. Solubles, fair as well. The dust, not applicable, not very compatible. The granules, not very compatible. And the ME, which is micro encapsulation, uh, encapsulated, very well, fair compatibility. Example of micro encapsulated product is. Prowl. All right, here's the label you can, we can observe where you see Caratrax 5EC. The EC at the end of the name represents emulsifiable concentration. So if you're trying to decide on what formulation the product is, it should be spelled out to you on the label like it is here based on the standard of the Pesticide Control Authority. And this tells you that it's an oil diluted formulation with an emulsifier that allows it to mix um, easily with water. All right. <clears throat> Compatibility. How do we know if the pesticides are compatible before we apply them? Right. You have four different effects that you can get from um, tank mixes or mixture of different pesticides. You have the additive effects, the synergistic responses, antagonisms, and enhancements. Additive, additive effects. When you mix two or more chemicals together, Right, the same response when you use them alone. It's easy, easy to mix and reduce the number of field passes, meaning instead of spraying one and you have to go up and down and spray the other, you just mix both and apply them together. A good example of this is glyphos with benzene or prole. They don't react with each other and you can apply them and the glyphos will take care of the above ground weeds, basically the foliar portion of the weeds, while the plantain or the prowl will take care of the seeds and prevent them from germination and give you longer control. Another example is cure and niceron. Cure is a miticide insecticide, while niceron is a strict miticide. The cure is very effective on the nymph and the larva on the adult stage of the mite, while the niceron is very effective on the 
egg and the nymphal stage. So you'll get a better control. Some farmers may spray, may rotate, but together they work perfectly. They are not, um, they doesn't have an antagonistic relationship. So they work perfectly and you get the same results when they are mixed together. Synergistic response. Oftentimes, the synergistic response is confused with additive effects. Additive, additive effect, the pesticides does not affect each other. It just goes in the tank mix, comes out as is without, without changing, and does the work the same as it does applied by itself. But with a synergistic re response, you get a greater response when you mix them together. True interaction with chemicals basically chemical interact with each other and basically enhance the efficacy of each other oftentimes this allows you to reduce the rate um, that you use the chemicals that when you're mixing two chemicals that have a synergistic effect because they support each other and help each other to work um, at a more efficient and effective rate Example of these are Alverde and Acrobat. Excellent combination. You get excellent control for fight after a fusarium and other fungal disease when you mix these two products together. Antagonism. Antagonism cause less control when two products, two or more chemicals are mixed. Basically, they either compete with each other for space, they bind up molecules, they allow each other to work at a lower effectiveness, a lower efficiency, if any at all. May also cause phytotoxicity based on the reaction or the type of um, chemical class. Example, you mix some grass and grass herbicides with a broadleaf herbicide. These are selective herbicides now. You normally get this kind of reaction. They cancel out each other and you do not get the effect that you expect to get on the, um, on the weeds. Mix copper fungicide with emulsifiable concentrates, you also get this, this um, response. As a matter of fact, they may not even mix together. The copper, which is a yeast, which is a wettable powder, will settle at the bottom and emulsifiable concentrate would flow to our settles at the top. Our farmer a film at the top with the water in between. This relationship you do not want to experience because they often time the, this combination is what block your spray equipment and clogs your equipment or your drip system if you should be try to fertigate or drip pesticides through your to your drip system. Enhancement. When two pesticides is mixed with an additive to provide greater response. In other words, one will enhance the efficacy of the other. And a prime example of <coughs> these are your adjuvants. For example, your new film P, your breakthrough, spreader sticker, or your exit. These normally enhance the efficacy of your pesticides to the plants. All right. There are two types of reaction when it comes to compatibility. You have the physical, usually involves inert ingredient. So therefore the inert ingredients normally involve in the physical reaction where are non-compatibility, we're flaking, crystals forming, sludge, are formed and these can clog your equipment. Example again, the EC with the WP, which is the example that we used before, with the copper fungicide and an emulsifiable concentrate. Chemical reaction would be deactivation of active ingredients due to pH, temperature, class of chemistries. Example, mixing glyphosate with dirty water 
that can cause the active ingredient to um, deactivate it. And also, we can go back to the, 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 uh, the reference of the grass herbicides and the broadleaf herbicides. That would be a chemical reaction that can out each other. Right. Tank, tank mixing pesticides advantages reduce the cost of application therefore you can apply a fungicide an insecticide and maybe a mighty side together all at once and reduce the labor cost for applying those three pesticides you control a wider range of pests also and in some cases like where you have the synergistic effect it enhances some pesticides so you can apply a wide range of treatment at once and at a lower cost basically disadvantage may cause phytotoxicity and severe economic loss when not done correctly but you run the risk of scorching your entire field depending on how toxic the mixture is Okay, so precautions. We always recommend that you check the label for tank mix recommendations. Right? Or a note any restraint. For example, if it specify a specific water quality or make reference to any incompatibility, please make note of that and follow the label specification. With the pesticides, pesticide is not well known and no label recommendation is available. Do a jar test, which we'll look at in another slide, in slides to come. Mix all pesticides properly according to the label. So always read the label, always follow the label specification. Okay, so the recommended sequence for tank mixing pesticides. An acronym is a WALE wheel that most people use to remember the sequence, right? However, before we reach the whale sequence, we recommend that first and foremost you adorn yourself in the proper PPE. To protect yourself right then you can proceed to part partly fill the spray tank with water as per label direction in some cases or most cases at least 70 percent full well 50 to 70 percent full add any water conditioner if necessary and then now we start with our pesticides so the w in wheel is add all the wettable powders water dispersible granule or even dry flowable so mostly powders that need wetting for for to, to be dissolved and the a you start agitating and maintain agitation during the mixing and spraying during mixing and even when spraying for the l add any flowable liquid so this this is where all the liquids come in so flowable liquid, suspension, concentrate, etc. And the E, add any emulsifiable concentrate. Now, aqueous solution and soluble liquids are in red here because I realized that in the States, like for Florida, when I cite references from Florida, they would put this in before the emulsifiable concentrates along with the liquids. However, in Australia, this in their standard goes in after. However, it works both ways based on my observation and experience. It doesn't 
cause any adverse effect before or after. Once you put in the um, WPs before and get that agitated, most cases, once the product or the chemistry is compatible, it will mix uniformly just the same. Add an adjuvant if required. Remember, some pesticides already have adjuvants in there. Fill the remainder of the spray tank with water and use the spray mix within 24 hours. Unless otherwise stated, you can um, left standing, but the recommendation is to use it within 24 hours. Now, I may mention of um, Okay, summary of the sequence. Adjust pH of water. Add nutrients. Add wettable powder or wettable dispersible granule. Add the suspension concentrate. Add your emulsifiable concentrate, then your soluble liquid. And remember that the soluble liquids can come before or after suspension concentrate, then your adjuvants. All right, we mentioned earlier that if you're not sure about the type of chemicals and the label does not specify how to tank mix this particular pesticide, you can do a jar test using a one liter jar. So we recommend that you wear your personal protective equipment as well, even though you're using a one liter jar, always protect yourself when handling pesticides. We also recommend that you read the label for any information that may be available. If it's not available, then you proceed to do your jar test. So we add to the jar the same, in the same proportion as you would do in the field. So you want to use an example of what you do in the field at the same rate. 5 milliliter of pesticide to 1 liter of water would be in the same proportion of 1 liter of pesticide to a 200 liter drum, which we call a 50 gallon drum. Right? So you, that's how we use it. So 5 ml of the pesticide in 1 liter of water would be equivalent to that. So, but you can mix and match for those that have a higher um, rate of application per for the drum. But it's a standard that you can use if a one liter of that pesticide would work normally work for a drum of water, which is 200 liters. Again, we have the jar of water. Then add the pesticides according to the whale plan that we discussed before. Your wettables and your agitate, your liquids, and your emulsifiable concentrates. Then you add the balance of water. Agitate vigorously and feel the sides of the jar for heat. Check for lumps, scum, or, clip, or cl no, clogs. That should be clogs. Let the jar stand for five minutes and then you check again for any lumps, any scum, or any clogs, or even increase in temperature. Check for any gels, flakes, sludge, or other precipitants. Check to see if there is any separation, layering, or small oil particles in the solution. So you'd look at the jar to see if there's a different coloration along the jar regarding the solution. If particles are settling at the bottom, if there's a film at the top, etc. If separation layers are formed after sitting for over 30 minutes, but can be resuspended by agitating, application may be possible. Because generally, it's natural for suspensions to behave like that. When you left them for a good while, then solid particles will settle at the bottom, and then you might find oils at the top, etc., etc. But if it can be mixed out back into a solution, it it's highly possible that you can apply it. Since this is a jar test, you can apply it on a test area 
and observe if there's any phytotoxicity on your crops, etc. If there is layering, and emulsifiable concentrate, as I tell you before, the EC will normally go to the top and the wettable powder settles to the bottom. The mixture, this mixture may clog your spray equipment, so do not even attempt to try and spray once there is visible separation that will not mix out completely. All right, before we receive the questions, I have one question for a gift. What formulation is Bellis? So you can answer. Jaja, I think they would answer by typing the answer or how would they respond? Type in the chat okay type in the chat your answer what is the formulation of bellis you can just type in the acronym Is that Bellis or Delis? I, I don't, I don't, I didn't hear that properly. Bellis, Bellis fungicide. Oh, Bellis. Okay. Winston? Yes. Wagwan General. <laughs> yes, Jesse, what's up? Uh, they, I wanted to ask, right? Yeah. The product Nisuron, what product is that? Nisuron is a mighty side, strict mighty side. It's hexatized oh. acts. The active oh, oh. oh, okay. So it's like an IGR? No, no, no. Strict mighty side. If you don't mind, next if against the egg and the nymph. Oh, okay, okay. So is that contact? It work by contact action? Yes. Okay. Thanks. All right, I am seeing some responses and I have not gotten the correct response as yet. The Java and Anderson wettable powder. No, but this is not a wettable powder. Vincent, can you say the, um, the question again, please? What is the formulation of Bellis fungicide? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Java and Henry, uh, Ricardo Brown. Yeah, Ricardo Brown is the first one to type in WG, wettable granule, or you could say WDG, wettable <laughs> So, Ricardo Brown. Hello. Yeah, please send your information so we can contact you. Congratulations, you are the winner. Okay, thank you. This will be the end of the presentation. So, if you have any questions, we can um, proceed to ask regarding the tank mixes and compatibility ratio or even formulation. Does H does um H chem sells PPEs? No, sir. We do not sell personal protective equipment. I think they should consider that, you know, seeing that they said they're in the chemical business. I'll make a note of that. Hmm. Where can you recommend that. I get it though? Repeat. Where can you recommend I get the PPEs, especially those white suits? That's full those full white suits. The full white suits are uh, where was, I know Cam Carp Industrial sells a wide range of 
um, personal protective equipment for both agriculture and industrial purposes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because all right, this is why I said I think Ajkem should consider it. If it is that you're going to be preaching safety while using the chemicals, at least you should be should should have things. Hi, right, Kevin. Kevin, we do. Hello. Hello. Yes, I think I think she having some technical difficulties. I should just trip out. Oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Kevin. No, well, it seems like she was going to say she should do something like like that. Do sell it? Uh, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, man, I'm saying that since since that they're going to send, sell these type of chemicals that may be harmful to persons, you know, at least two things they can probably sell out of the personal, the personal protective yeah. equipment. Two or three things. Hi, right, Kevin, just a minute. You hear me? Yes, oh, hear you. Hi, this is Georgia. So we do have a couple of things. We have a cover all and everything. I don't know what's happening here. Yes, George, I can hear you now. I'm saying we do have a coverall set. Okay, okay, a coverall set. So, so it has all the... It has all everything that you would need, but what you can do is to send me your information. Send it to me directly and I will contact you. This is Georgia. That means that you have my information. This is Kevin Gale. Oh, you in your WhatsApp? Yes. Oh, oh, all right. Not a problem. All right. Cool, Georgia. Thanks. You're welcome. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear. In your presentation, well, and. Um, I want to find out what was the who was the intended audience for this presentation. Who who are you expecting to join? Farmers. Pardon? Farmers. Farmers. Yes, dear. From a a, a non-agriculture perspective, I thought that the presentation was very advanced not only in terms of language, but in terms of, of uh, the whole chemistry of it. The average farmer like myself would not necessarily be able to follow some of what you were saying to us. Understand. Um, I'll be more than happy to clear up um, any part that was a little bit technical. It's just or, the language. The language overall. Overall, okay. I mean, I am speaking for the layman, the person who is not necessarily very verbose and would perhaps know what agitate means. We were all given an invite to this Zoom meeting, but you have to understand too that the average farmer may not be able to follow what you're saying. That is true, that is true. That was an oversight. And, and not only that, not only was the language, I think, above the average person, um, it was filled with a lot of chemistry that made it hard for other persons to be able to follow. If you don't have an agriculture background, don't have a chemistry background, I have a chemistry background. If you don't have a chemistry background, you may not be able to follow the, the, the simple jargons of, of even the arm. Um, the acronyms, the, the WP, the, the, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So I would think that we have to revisit how this information is dispersed, especially if we want it to meet, to um, really reach the farmers, the real farmers, who are the ones who aren't necessarily able to have a conversation in standard English, let alone use the vocabulary that you are using. Okay, so would you recommend that we probably simplify, simplify, simplify it some more? And and um, it came across to me as a college lecture. I'm not sure if anybody else agrees, but it came across as a college a, a college lecture rather than dispersing the information that we really need in terms of mixing. Another thing, you mentioned you're mentioning safety, and you spoke about um. 
in preparation of one of the, the chemicals you spoke about, but for the tank mix, you spoke about not, you, you spoke about using it within 24 hours, but you did not speak to safety in regards to disposing the content after 24 hours. As an environmentalist myself, part of the problems that we have with chemical use or indiscriminate chemical use is, is pollution, soil pollution, water pollution. I would have hoped that you would have actually told us how to discard um, the, ex the extra, what's left over. My two cents. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for your contribution. And we do appreciate um, your two cents, as you call it. Uh, what we also recommend in terms of mixing and applying pesticide, we recommend that for all the farmers, try as best as possible not to mix more than you actually need to apply in your field. And um, sorry, I did not get your name, but we do appreciate your contribution. And we will look into the content. My name is Sarita Simpson, sir. Hi, Miss Simpson. Thank you very much. Right. You know, thank you for having me, Mr. Winston. <laughs> I can't see the names anymore. I'm not sure what's happening. No, okay. But thank you. That was very, that was very good. I really, I really appreciate the yeah, constructive criticism. And it's a work in progress, especially with the platform where you're behind us and you're not seeing the face of the target audience to say, okay, right. it doesn't sit right with that person. Let me break it down. But we will endeavor to try our best to simplify as best as possible, as it can easily be an oversight as we live in this. Uh, we are part Technological of the industry, world. We I understand. Yes. yes. But thank you. Then, um, good afternoon. Yes, sir. You know, I, I do agree with her. You know, um, I was looking at the picture, the last picture that you have that mark any question. Yes. And uh, that is how I look right now. <laughs> 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 that is how I look um, in terms in terms of understanding um understanding all that you just said. But you know, me just me just try to break it down. Me just try to break it down. Yeah, yeah. Me just try to break it down. Just say, all right. Make sure you use the chemical them properly. You're gonna use them properly. You know, say yeah, this is gonna happen. My that gonna happen. Basically, that's what me get out of everything because me try for under. No matter how technical something is, I try to understand it, but. As as the, the I don't remember her name a while ago. Miss Simpson. Yes. Miss Simpson just said a while ago that you know the the, the, the average farmer. All right, but Kevin, it's Georgia right. again. So what I, what we will do from this point, we will simplify the presentation and yes. send it back out there to the farmers. Yes, yes. because so we will definitely do that. Yes. And then um, who is Winston and Georgia? I'm just wondering though. How are you going to break down in simple term chemical compounds? No, 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 that's okay. But what we will do for the big words, we will just tell what the meaning is. Because exactly. You, at, this level, at this level, we don't need phytotoxicity and agitate when we know no, steer but and we know one of the um, things. Mix. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Excuse me, just a bit. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Even though I do agree with the simplification of the um, the information, I would more ask farmers on this platform to go and research on the big words that they don't understand. No, mm -mm. no, no dear. My, my, my reason for no. saying this, no, it is a technological world that we are entering into. So it's not all well people are going to be there to simplify things for us. And just like what I heard Mrs. Jones ask a while ago, how are you going to simplify terms pertaining to chemical? They That's not what we're speaking words. about, my dear. You have totally missed the point of this. 